Hello, everyone. This is Renee Rentmeister. I'm the creator and executive producer of the Cooking Without Looking TV show and podcast. And today is a particular honor for us. We have Laura Faki. And Laura, tell us your background. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, hello, everyone. And thank you for having me on the show. Um, as Renee says, I I'm Laura. Um, um, I'm a Paralympic athlete. Um, in fact, I'm a Paralympic double gold medalist. So I've, I've won two wow. Paralympic champs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, but more, more importantly, I, I, I also love to cook. So yeah, that, that's, that's more important. <laughs> oh, of course. Well, how did you, um, first off, I, I noticed in your bio, it's quite interesting. Everyone in your family is blind. Tell yes. us a little bit about that. So yes, yeah, so my my condition is hereditary. Um, I get it from my mum. So m both my brothers and, and myself are, are all um, registered blind. Um, I've got what I've got light perception, so I can see if you know the sun is out. But that's about it, really. I sometimes pick up shadows, but there's nothing useful. And, and my my brothers and my mum are all the same. Um, and my 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 dad is visually impaired as well because so when when mom and dad were growing up, you know they were sent off to blind schools because obviously when you know they were younger that's kind of what the done thing was you you had a child with a visual impairment you ship them off to a boarding school and only see them at holidays. Um, so mom and dad met at a blind school. My dad's condition is um, not hereditary. Um, he's got congenital cataracts so you know his his sight is his, his condition is very different to ours but yeah I've grown up in a family where I mean his sight is kind of he's got one we've got one working eye between the five of us so 10 <laughs> eyes and one works so it's it's um yeah it, it made for entertaining you know entertainment growing up but how many we, people are in your family so when I was growing up, there was like living at home, there was mom and dad and then my two brothers and myself. Um, my, my eldest brother, um, he's, he's 12 years older than me. So he left home when I was around six or seven and went off to uni uh, college and then university. And his, he's now got two children and one of them has our sight condition and the other one doesn't. So it's, um, yeah, it's interesting. Well, um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, go on. I was just saying, I'm I'm currently expecting my first child, so I'll, <gasps> I'll be intrigued oh. to see what you know what 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 happens. But either way, it doesn't you know it doesn't matter to us because like you know I I've I've never let my visual impairment get me in the way, and I feel like if if anyone could bring up a child that can't see, then I'm I'm fairly fairly well equipped. <laughs> well, congratulations! How far along are you? uh 26 weeks today so oh um, wow that's amazing that's so wonderful well it's very uh, exciting it is, it is and you know what I've, i digress tell us tell <laughs> us all i'm sure everyone can hear your accent tell us uh, tell all of us where you're um calling from yeah so i'm well I, I was born and bred in liverpool um sort of in england um but due to competing in sport I've had to move to Manchester which is just across it's a, it's a sort of an hour's drive away from Liverpool so yeah no, northwest England um where it's this, currently for a change the sun is out and it's not raining so yeah I'm oh. making the most of it <laughs> <laughs> well I was I was thinking about you talking about your family and how everyone uh, was blind and I remember playing tricks on my brothers and we were all excited what kind of tricks do you play on your on your siblings <laughs> <laughs> well I'll tell you hide and seek is a, a, brings a whole new dimension when none of you can see each other the amount of times we would we would sort of play hide and seek and just stand in the middle of a room <laughs> Kids can be cruel, can't they? Yeah, that's pretty cruel, but it, it's, a, it's sort of funny too. I can. No, it's very funny. Standing in the middle of a room and you're there, yeah. and you're, you're hiding. <laughs> well, tell us, tell us some of your um, your uh, 
experiences with the Paralympics? Yeah, so I've, I've been to three Paralympics now. My first one was, was London back in 2012. Um, and then I went, uh, raced in Rio in 2016 and then Tokyo last year. And they were all three games have been in, you know, very different, very different experiences. Um, it's, it's amazing to see how sport has developed since the London Paralympics, how it's become a lot more accepted um, you know disability sport in general and how people now see it for what it is rather than oh look at that disabled person you know having a go <laughs> at sport it there's a lot more respect now and sure um and it so it, it's it's great um and yeah it, you know I've, I've raced i've so i race on a tandem with a bicycle for two people um, so I'm the one on the back and then there's a fully sighted person who goes on the front and they do the steering and, and make sure we don't crash into anything, obviously. Um, <laughs> and I've been doing that for, well, I first started racing in 2009, so 13 years ago now. And, and yeah, it's, it's, it's honestly been, it's, it's, it's great fun. I'm, I'm fortunate it is my job. Um, I'm funded by the National Lottery in the UK, which means that um so you know it is my job it's what I'm paid to do um wow. and I'm I'm incredibly lucky that you know I've I get paid to ride my my bike in lots of different countries around the world and you know it's it's brought me like say I've I've raced in Tokyo and Rio but then I've also raced sort of world championships I've, I've, I've been to LA I've been to Greenville in um, South Carolina I've been to Canada I've been to all all over Europe I've been to Sydney in Australia so you know it's 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 an it's it's great fun um I'm just lucky you know that I get to I get paid to do what I love doing it is it's amazing what was your uh, what was your favorite country that you raced in that's a really really tricky question um <laughs> probably Italy purely because I love Italian food and uh -huh. and especially Italian ice cream like gelato is just the food of the gods I'll be honest with you um <laughs> so and there's nothing more rewarding than having a really hard race and like winning a medal and rewarding yourself with a, a, a cup of ice cream or whatever afterwards it's like yeah that that's oh that sounds that sounds like a lot of fun I think I'd be racing too if I knew that there was gelato <laughs> yeah exactly Chocolate. just What's your yourself of ice cream <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> What's your favorite flavor that gets you to the end? Uh, oh, pistachio, maybe. Oh. Um, yeah. You know, I think um, so. You know, there was a, an interesting conversation um, that I had with uh, some people one day, and they, uh, it was during the time of the Olympics, and they were wondering why the Paralympics aren't connected to the other Olympics because it would bring lots more publicity and, and things along with it. What are your thoughts on that? So it's a really tricky one. Um, personally, I like that they're separate because mm -hmm. I think actually if, if we were to be part of the able-bodied Olympics, I feel like we would actually get overshadowed. And we've, we've fought for many years to get um, respect and attention like media attention for the Paralympics and it is finally starting to build um, so I and I think I think it's something we should like keep separate and celebrate our difference like um, because I think the Olympics are great to watch but the majority of people you when you watch in the Olympics and you think they I could never be as good as them or you know they're they're like something else and then you watch the Paralympics and you see all these individuals that have had to overcome massive challenges and are still successful and it's you know it's in many ways it's far more inspirational um, and it's far more kind of people can relate to it a lot more um, because we're all flawed and we're, we're not perceived as this perfection you know level that you you cannot achieve so i i actually i i something i i'm quite keen to keep separate and i'm 
I'm, you know, I'm proud of being a Paralympian. That that's who I am, and the reason I am that is because I'm visually impaired. And I think it comes down to, I I'm, you know, I'm proud of being visually impaired. It's something that it so it's who I am. It's it's my identity. If I wasn't visually impaired, I wouldn't ride a tandem, and I wouldn't have raced all over the world. I uh, wouldn't have a guide dog, and you know, it it wouldn't it it's. It, that's what shaped me and that's who I am today. Well, that's, you know, that's an interesting perspective. It does make a lot of sense because I was thinking about it from the other way, like, you know, like, hey, all the media is out there and, and you know, for the other Olympics and yeah. they'd be there for you too, but you make uh, some really good convincing arguments uh, why to keep it separate. Yeah, I think it's all perspective, isn't it? And how you because I mean you could you could sit there and think well I want to be part of that and, and that but um you I know what I love <laughs> you you said something about you know without being blind you wouldn't have had all of this opportunity and I think that's an excellent point because like a lot of sighted people you know the minute you talk about blindness you know they go into the doldrums and oh yeah and, you know when i when i talk to people i'll say no it's not an oh you know and and what you're saying is exactly true yeah it's something it's it's who you are and it's something to to be proud of and to celebrate and and i know it's easy for me to say because i i've never had sight so i i, I consider myself one of the lucky ones because what i've never had i don't miss um and i do believe it is much harder for people who have had full sight you know have been able to drive have been able to live in you know do everything with sight and then have lost it it's it's a much more daunting kind of world and i do get it but for someone like myself you know i don't i don't i genuinely i don't know what it's like to have sight sure. and the idea of waking up tomorrow with sight terrifies me because i wouldn't know i wouldn't know what to do i wouldn't know how to live my life cuz i've just grown up you know, this is me, this is who I am. Yes, I might have to do a few things differently to my friends and the people around me, but that that's who I am. Um, well, but that, yeah, I, I recognize I am, I am quite unique like that. Well, you know, that, that makes, you make some uh, extremely interesting points. It, I, I had seen a, a show about a, a young man who had actually been deaf all of his life and then he got the cochlear implants and he he was frightened he didn't know mm. how to deal with all that extra sensory um you know the sound and everything and so it makes a lot of sense what you say yeah again though no, i think it's all perspective it's how you choose to look at it how you choose to you know mentally prepare and and just if, if you if you want to wallow and feel sorry for yourself then you're always going to feel quite negative about it but if you I, I say to people because you know people say well how, how do you cope and I say well you've got two choices you either you know get upset about the fact you can't see and pity you feel sorry for yourself and, and start you know cry about it or you get on with it you laugh at all the things that you do that are silly like walk into you know um <laughs> objects or fall over or when you're cooking add the wrong ingredients because you you thought you you were opening a tin of tomatoes and it turns out it was i don't know tin fruit or or whatever like you, you just you just laugh about it don't you and then and you can't you can't live your life crying but you can live live your life laughing so that's that's your choice Oh, I, I like that. I like that a lot. Well, speaking of cooking, <laughs> tell us about your cooking escapades. Yeah, I, I, so I, I love cooking. It's what I do to relax. So when, when it's, it's quite a funny phenomenon, really, where when I'm training, I'm very regimented, I'm very strict. I have a program set by my coach. Um, so I train six days a week and I train twice a day the majority of the time. This is when I'm not pregnant. It has changed a little <laughs> bit while I, while I am pregnant, but I do intend to go back to that once, once baby's um, settled in and we, know, we, we sort of figure out maybe what we're doing. I don't think you ever really figure out what you're doing with parenting, but no. um, <laughs> we'll get to that one anyway. But yeah, so 
um, when I'm training, it's very regimented and I stick to the program. And when I'm following a recipe and when I'm cooking, can I can I follow a recipe? Can I do what I'm told? Absolutely not. I, I'm just it's my it's my time to be creative. It's my time to to play around with um, ingredients. And what I love most about cooking is like the different smells and the sounds like when you're frying something and it's sizzling away in the pan and it's such a sensory experience um you know it's not just about what it looks like at the end it it, it I, I I love I love it um and I was going through a, a really difficult time a few years ago on the bike I, I was training wasn't going very well I wasn't very happy I, I wasn't in the best kind of mental shape and I was talking to someone who suggested you know, you need to find something away from cycling that you enjoy. Um, that that you know, find something else. I was thinking, well, there's not much else really. But you know, I like cooking, <laughs> and they were like, well, why don't you start a blog? And I was like, I I can't write. I don't like writing. Um, but it turns out I do actually, and I don't mind. I, and I, so I started this blog called Blindingly Good Food, um, and what it was it was inspired by initially when I do a lot of talks through my sport like when I go into schools and talk to kids about what I do and even you know any volunteer groups or anything and talk about competing and the life of an athlete one of the first most frequently asked questions is so what's your diet like do you have to be really strict so I started the blog with that kind of approach of giving people the opportunity to see what it is I actually eat, eat as an athlete. Um, so I've shared lots of my recipes, but then it morphed into, I realized I'm in a quite a unique position where I, I can't see and I've, I've, I'm quite happy, comfortable in the kitchen, um, you know, and I started to think, well, I could share a lot of my tips and tricks around how I cook without sight for other people who are learning to live without sight and how how to be more independently because there's nothing more empowering I think than being able to cook a meal for the people you love and I think it's it's such an underestimated thing as as a person when you you know when you are living without sight you do at times become reliant on other people there are certain things you have you know you 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 kind of need need help yeah. from sighted people yeah. but to then be able to say oh if you do this for me you know I can cook you I can cook you a really tasty healthy meal I can look after you too um you know it's it's such such an important thing and especially when like for myself, I'm at an age where, you know, I've been wanting to start a family for a while and I want to be able to make sure my child has a healthy diet. I want to look after them. I want to be able to feed them properly. Um, and my husband, my, my husband, uh, we met me and my husband through sports. So he's also an athlete. We, we actually both, were, you know, we've both been to, uh, we both won gold medals in Tokyo on the same day, which was oh, an incredible wow. experience um so yeah so we're you know we we both kind of train and and that so it's important to make sure that the both of us eat healthily um and so we we split the jobs in the house I do all the cooking and he does he does other things you know like other jobs so and it just it's just it works really well you're a team you're a team yeah. <laughs> exactly well laura tell us uh tell us about your recipe your uh the cooking without looking recipe of the day today by the way <laughs> uh people will be able to go uh to this website our website www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com and if you can't remember all that just google cooking without looking and you'll find it yeah so um i think the recipe i chose is um my chicken creole um which is one of the recipes i first when when i was first trying to develop my confidence in the kitchen and my cooking skills i i found this recipe um in a in a braille book i'd got from the rnib which is the national blind charity in um, britain and it's it, it i love 
I'm I'm quite controversial, and it is definitely one. Some you either love it or you hate it. But I love to add fruit. I have a very sweet tooth, anyway. Um, oh, wow. So I love to add add fruit to my like savory. You know, like people say, oh, should you shouldn't you put pineapple on pizza? Um, I actually am um, reserved on that one. I, I don't actually believe you should put pineapple on a pizza. However, <laughs> you should definitely put it in a curry um yeah uh, definitely so th so this this recipe is um is a uh, inspired by a um sort of cre it's a creole sort of caribbean you know american curry um and you use uh you, well i make it with chicken and then um spring onions celery you fry them Till they start to soften you add a bit of garlic plenty of chili um, and then you add the pineapple and you keep frying it for a little while and then you mash up a banana till really smooth with a little bit of lemon juice and you pour, pour that in add the diced up chicken breast and then just let it simmer away um, if you like it a bit spicier you add a bit more um, tabasco sauce or anything like that chili sauce um, and yeah you just let it simmer for a sort of 15 20 minutes till the chicken's cooked all the way through um I always I prefer to cook with like chicken breast or you know some meat that's not on the bone just because I, I find it a lot easier to know when it's cooked it's and and it, when if you cook it cut it up into small bite-sized pieces it cooks much quicker so you then don't have to deal with the worry of oh is it cooked all the way through sure. um so so yeah so you just simmer it and it it creates this lovely sweet but spicy curry and the banana when you cook it almost takes on a similar text to um, mashed potato so it's quite starchy and thick but it just so it coats the chicken and, and creates a really nice um sweet curry oh, that just sounds uh, amazing that sounds uh, wonderful um, you serve I like to serve it with I cook, cook my rice but instead of in boiling water I use coconut milk um when I'm making that curry so you get like a coconutty rice um oh wow you know, and with with the with this curry and it's just honestly it's like it's like eating summer on a plate you know oh, you, you, that really beautiful. tropical holiday summer like. on a plate i love that i love it it sounds <laughs> so great well laura if if your fans are out there and they want to uh, contact you how do they contact you yeah so you can contact me through my blog which is blindinglygoodfood.com um uh, sorry .co.uk um i'm i'm yeah, so blindinglygoodfood.co.uk or you can email me at laura, which is spelled L-O-R-A at blindinglygoodfood.co.uk or I'm on I'm on um, social media. I'm, I'm most active on Twitter um, and I have the two accounts. I have my personal account, which is, it's actually, I haven't ever changed my maiden name. So I'm, I'm at, at Laura Turnham um, or my the, the blog has its own Twitter page as well, which is at blindingly GF. Um, so yeah, I'd love to, you know, if people do have any questions or want to chat or anything, then please do get in touch. Um, uh, there's, there's plenty of other recipes. That recipe is on my blog along with plenty of others. So yeah, if you, if you like the sound of that recipe, there's plenty more where it came from. It sounds wonderful. I love chicken curry. And so um, I'm going to try it myself. That sounds amazing. Laura, thank you so much for being with us. I'm honored to have you on our show. Um, we'd, uh, we'd love to have you on our uh, TV show, the Cooking Without Looking TV show. I'd love and, to. Um, we're honored to have you on the podcast today. Oh, thank you. And um, thank you for helping us change the way we see blindness. If you want to reach out to us, um, uh, we're on the website again, www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. And we have a Cooking Without Looking YouTube channel. So you can um, hear past shows and, and hear some of our podcasts there. So thank you so much, Laura.